This is Mr. Alexander, and we are on the fourth and final video covering the <coughs> review for the Unit 4 exam. So, number 30. A quarterback throws an incomplete pass. The height of the football is modeled by the equation y equals negative 10x squared plus 2x plus 8. Determine the possible zeros of the function which will model the incomplete pass and decide which re solutions are reasonable. So let's graph this thing real quick. Let's go into y equals, and let's type in that negative 10x squared plus 2x plus 8. Now I can see that this thing has two zeros, one right there and one right there. And if this is the uh, if this is the model of the thrown ball, it wouldn't make any sense to have a negative zero because presumably this is the point at which it left the quarterback's arm and then it traveled downward from there. Uh, so it would make sense to have a zero right here, but I'm pretty sure that negative solution that's not going to be a reasonable solution. But let's check it out anyway. Uh, so we're going to use the quadratic formula. To do that, you first set this thing equal to zero, because uh, that's how you find a zero, is you set the y equal to zero. And then you say a equals negative 10, b equals 2, c equals 8. And we are going to plug that directly in the quadratic formula. So x equals negative b, which is negative 2, plus and minus the square root of b squared, which is 4, minus 4 times a times c, which is 8, all divided by 2a, or negative 20. All right, so let's do this square root part in the calculator. And let's say that we've got 4 minus 4 times negative 10 times 8 is 324. So this is negative 2 plus and minus square root of 324 divided by negative 20. Well, the square root of 324 is just 18. So then we've got negative 2 plus and minus 18 divided by negative 20. And so we're almost there. Negative 2 minus 18 is negative 20 divided by negative 20. And the negative 2 plus 18 is 16 divided by negative 20. So when you reduce these, you've got 1 and negative 8 tenths. Now, I think only one of these solutions is right because we already talked about why it wouldn't make sense for you to have a negative zero here, uh, unless we're talking about negative time or something. And I don't, as far as I know, we don't have a time machine. So I think the only correct answer is x equals 1. Let's go on to 31. You're building a deck, and you model the requirements of, for the deck in the inequality below based on your needs for the width w of the deck. Find the solution set for the inequality below. Well, to find the solution set, we need to first set this thing equal to zero. So I'm just going to change this a little bit to 4w for width squared minus 10w minus 80 is less than or equal to uh, zero. Now I'm going to plug that in the quadratic formula, but before I do, I'm going to divide all of this by 2 just to make it a little bit easier. And so that's going to give me 2w squared minus 5w minus 40 is less than or equal to 0. And at this point, we want to do a, b, and c. a equals 2, b equals negative 5, and c equals negative 40. And we're going to say x is less than or equal to. So that's the key difference here. It's not x is equal to. It's less than or equal to. Uh, negative b, which is 5, plus and minus the square root of negative 5 squared is 25, minus 4 times 2 times negative 40, all divided by 2a, which is 4. Okay, so that's the same as saying that x is less than or equal to 
Uh, just for this one problem, I want to actually use the decimal approximation of that square root, and that's going to be okay for this one problem. Let's just say square root of 25 minus 4 times 2 times negative 40. And when I do that, I get 18 point so I got 5 plus and minus 18.57. Now on the rest of the problems you're not going to want to do anything but an exact answer, but on this particular problem, on the test, the answer is approximate, not exact. So for this one on the review, we're going to let this be uh, an approximate answer. So when I work this out, what I'm essentially saying is that x has to be between two numbers. And the two numbers it has to be between be 5 minus 18.57 divided by 4 is negative 3.39, we'll call it. And 5 plus 18.57 divided by 4, 5.89. I really shouldn't be using an x here. I should probably be using a w since that's the variable in question. Uh, and I should also stop and think for a moment. I should be thinking about using w's instead of x's. But then I should ask myself, in the context of this problem, does this inequality make sense? Could the width be between negative 3 feet and approximately 6 feet? No, it couldn't. Uh, this is an unreasonable answer. In fact, the lowest this could possibly be is just above zero, because if the width was zero, then it certainly wouldn't be a width. It would be nothing. So I want to say that the lowest it could be is just above zero, and I'm going to represent that with that inequality, w less than or equal to 5.89. And that is the solution right there. All right, almost there. For a typical field goal attempt from the 30 yard line in a football game, the ball's height in feet will be a function of time in flight in seconds modeled by the equation below. When a player kicks a typical field goal, for how many seconds of time will the ball be in the air? Okay, well let's graph this thing real quick. I wanna look at negative 16 x squared plus 40 x plus 7. I want to zoom in so you can see what I'm doing here. When I graph this thing, you can see that if I change my window just a little bit to make it a little bit higher, that this thing's in the air starting right there and then it ends right there. So what we're really talking about here is we're trying to find the zeros of this function because it's going to stop being in the air right there. Now we're going to ignore the negative one because it doesn't make any sense for you to be in the air for negative however many seconds. So we're just interested in this positive solution here. So you guessed it, we're trying to figure out where the height equals zero, which means we're solving using the quadratic formula. Start with your A, your B, and your C. And you've got negative 16, 40, and 7. Now, there's nothing to divide out here. There's no common multiples, so I'm just going to have to deal with these ugly numbers. I'm going to have, I'm going to use the right variable. I'm going to use t equals negative b, which is negative 40, plus and minus the square root of 40 squared, which I don't know off the top of my head, 1600 minus 4 times negative 16 times 7, all divided by 2a, which is negative 32. And hopefully that square root is something nice. 1600 minus 4 times negative 16 times 7. 2048, hopefully that's pretty, it's not. Okay, so we're going to do something fancy there. But for now, we'll say t is equal to negative 40 plus or minus the square root of 2048 divided by negative 32. 
Um, now, to reduce that 2048, we go into the calculator and we do 2048 divided by x squared. Scroll down to the first y that is less than 1, which occurs right around, do, 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 right around here. And we go back up to the first one that has a whole number for the x and the y, which is 32 and 2. So t equals negative 40 plus and minus the square root of uh, 32 root 2 all over negative 32. Now I'm going to rewrite that for a moment because that means negative 40 over negative 32 plus and minus square root of 32 root 2 over negative 32. So this is a positive number which comes out to be 40 over 32 is 1.25 or just 5 over 4 and we're just going to do the plus no we're going to do the minus because we want 32 divided by 32 is just 1 and so we want the solution where we add the root 2 we don't want the one where we subtract the root 2 so this is the exact answer and of course the units there is seconds and when you work that out, it's approximately, I don't know, let's see what it is. 5 over 4 plus root 2. It's about 2.66 seconds, but this is the exact answer. And the reason I left off the minus 1, 5 fourths minus root 2, is because we already talked about you can't have negative seconds. So this is the one solution, the only reasonable one. Okay, last problem, then we're done with the review. Triangle has perimeter of 10x squared. I'm just going to write this in here. Perimeter equals 10x squared plus 4x minus 3y plus 16. One side is 3x squared plus 2x minus 4. The other side is 4x plus 2y plus 4 and I need to know the length of that third side. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this perimeter and I'm going to subtract off these two sides. So to rewrite that, I'm going to write 10x squared plus 4x minus 3y plus 16. And I'm going to write this up and down actually because I want to subtract the 4x plus 2y plus 4, and I also want to subtract the 3x squared plus 2x minus 4. And when you write it up and down like this, it's a little bit easier to see. So 10x squared minus 3x is 7x squared. 4x minus 4x is 0, minus another 2x is negative 2x. Negative 3y minus 2y is negative 5y. And then finally 16 minus 4 minus a negative 4 means plus 4. So these two are going to cancel each other out and you're left with just 16. So I think our answer is 7x squared minus 7x minus 5y plus 16. And that's it. That's the review. Thank you for watching. Good luck on the test.